Today's goal for this message, like I said, we serve a bold God. Today's goal for this message is there's power in boldness. There's power in boldness. Oh gosh, I would hate to just live a Christian life that was not filled with God's power. And if you're in this place and you haven't been seeing the power of God in your life, we're going to be challenged today. We're gonna, this is like, hey, let's get excited, get fired up, and go after the kingdom with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind, kind of like the requirement is. I right? There's power in boldness. Boldness is a necessary trait for us as Christians to be used by the Holy Spirit and advance God's kingdom. It's the key ingredient to miracle signs and wonders. Where does it say that, Pastor Bishop, Elder, Disciple, Evangelist, Theologian, Austin? I'm glad you guys asked. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter four. A few people get my humor. That's all I need. One or two people laughing. The rest of you guys, I got the mic. 30 more minutes. (laughs) Acts, chapter four, 29 through 31, it says, And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness, in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. We see boldness mentioned twice there, right? And, and they stepped up in boldness and boldness allowed miracle signs and wonders. It's just amazing. You know, in the Holy Spirit, you want, you want to see boldness operate in your life? Be somebody, or you want to see the Holy Spirit operate in your life? Be somebody who's ready to step out and be bold. Amen. The Holy Spirit, imagine the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom, his angels looking down on the earth, trying to advance the kingdom, but finding only a few laborers. God looking down at the kingdom, see the world and seeing all of the harvest is what? Ripe. What's the word say? Harvest is ripe, ready to go. But there's only a few laborers. There's only a few laborers. So Jesus said, pray for the laborers. So I feel like the Holy Spirit, God's angels, the, the heart of God, the Father. You know, when someone wakes up, they're like, Can we, do we get to be used today? Do we get to do something today? Do we, get to, do we get to advance the kingdom of heaven through somebody today? Who's willing? Who's ready? And who's, who's about that business? And I want us as a church to, to feel infused today, not just from me, not from a cool not cool, not from a guy that's preaching a message, but I want you to be infused and endued with power from the Holy Spirit to step out and be bold. That is my, you guys, I put a lot of time in a secret place. I want to see the power of God move and impact you outside the walls of this church. Amen. That's what I want to see. So like I said, the goal of today's message, it would be amazing for you to leave here and not just be inspired mentally, but have a heart change, have a new confidence, have an excitement to step into the kingdom of heaven and see God's will advance through who? You. Especially you. Let's go. Daddy's in the house. Amen. Some of you that think something bad about that, that that's not where I'm going at all. And the Bible says to the pure, all things are pure, but to the corrupt and unbelieving, everything is defiled. So when I say daddy, it's not a bad thing. It's just, I'll try to quit saying it, okay? What do you think, Zach? (laughs) I got a story for you. I got some crazy family members. You know, I was talking about crazy family members. I got a great uncle by the name of Al. And it's just so interesting. My cousin's here today because he's going to be part of the story. Raise your hand. My cousin, part of the story. So he can keep me honest, okay? Okay. These guys, my great uncle Al and his kids that were double our age, always scared us at every family reunion. Yes or no? Oh, yeah. He says, oh, yeah. And we were intimidated. We didn't want to make eye contact. They're around. They're scary. I mean, it was, they were construction workers that were not saved. Okay. Here's an example. Pretend that this is a deck. And there's a rail right here so people don't fall off. And then you got those little mini rails in between. Guess what I'm talking about? They're called spindles. A lot of times made out of like two by two, one by two. My cousin here reached his hand out to give one of these uncles a high five as they were walking into the family reunion. What does the uncle do? Ripped him through the deck. 
Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> he got ripped through the deck. Like, these guys don't play, right? They're just intense and insane. And we are always intimidated and always scared. Fast forward um, 20 years. I'm, born, I'm a born-again Christian. What are we, in our mid-20s, late-20s? We get a call. My Uncle Al, great Uncle Al, is going to die. And if we want to drive down to Hepner, Oregon, and pay our last respects and, and say, you know, say bye, uh, the family's open to it. What do you think I think? What do you think I think? I do need saved, right? Yeah. And then I get scared. So me and my cousin drive down there, and we're driving down there. And the whole way down there, I have driving on one hand on the wheel, praying in tongues, praising God. And the Holy Spirit gives me a little word of knowledge just as much as I am praising God on the way down. I'll be praising him on the way back. And it gave me a little hope, a little encouragement, a little excitement that, man, I'm going to be able to see a guy get saved. Hopefully. We get down there, and his medical bed is inside the living room. How many guys have had those situations where loved ones passing and their beds in the living room, people coming through and saying bye for the last couple of weeks of their life? And we get there, and all of the crazy uncles, the uncle ripped my cousin through the decks there, and uh, the me, you know, he was he was my great uncle that was on his deathbed was there, and I'm like, man, when am I going to get an opportunity to share something with them? I got my, my Aunt Mona there, and Uncle Tony, and Uncle Mike, and when are these guys? I'm just sitting there thinking, when can I introduce and interject the subject of Jesus Christ in their life? I was there on a mission. Well, slowly but surely, they start, they start taking off and going, going places, and all of a sudden, the room's empty for like, what, 10 minutes? Maybe 10, maybe five minutes. As soon as room's empty, I go up to the medical bed and I put my hand on that little metal rail. And I said, Uncle Lau, I came down here to talk to you about Jesus. And he snapped. I don't need any of that religious B blankety, right? Yes or no? He did. He said that. And I said, I didn't come down here to talk to you about religion. This is life and death. Instantly starts crying. Power of God hit him. I stepped into the boldness. Power of God hit him. Started crying, led him to the Lord. Amen? I got a witness here. This is, we got to step into those key and crucial moments of boldness. Amen? So I want to talk about some boldness. I want to talk about some obstacles and oppositions of boldness. And I want us to receive the power of boldness today to go out and make a difference for God's kingdom. Praise God. Number one. I was willing to suffer that day, the fallout, if he didn't get saved. If I brought up Jesus in a room full of people and they told me to leave, we're not about this, don't bring your religious, I was willing to suffer. Point number one, boldness goes hand in hand with the willingness to suffer. We have to be willing to take our Christianity to a place that it costs us something, that we're willing to suffer, that we're willing to step out in boldness, that it's not just comfort sit in a pew Christianity. And, and there's a time and a place for this. The, the time and the place for this is for our body of Christ to be infused and endued with power from the, from the fivefold ministry to go out and do the work of the ministry according to Ephesians 4.11. That is our job. The job of the pastors up here is to get people filled with power to go and live for God and get more people saved. Amen. Let me guys know that is the purpose of anybody who grabs a mic typically. So we have to have a mindset willing to suffer. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.2. 2. Listen, listen to what Apostle Paul has to say here. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel in much conflict. Here he is, suffering, bold for God, speaking about God in much conflict. We have to be willing to to take our Christianity into the workplace and in, in, into private interactions and be willing to be laughed out of a restaurant, to be screamed at, to be, to be heckled at, to be labeled as the Jesus person. We have to get to the point to where I'm all in for God. I'm done playing. And I feel like that's the answer to many people's struggle with sin. Their struggle with sin, sin ain't even the problem. The problem is you're not white hot for God, so you're distracted. We have to be white hot for God and run in the race, run in the kingdom with boldness. 
And, and, and the purpose of this message today is to bring boldness, to, to encourage and inspire and do and fill people with, with hope and, and a motivation and inspiration to go out there and truly live for God. That's what it takes. We have to truly live for God. Amen. How many of you guys know we're called to bear fruit? What's the fruit of a Christian? More souls. That's the main fruit. That's the main fruit we're called to bear. Boldness costs a lot. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1, it says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Okay, so here's my body. God, here it is. It's yours. Let's go today. I'm a willing vessel. God, I give my body to you today to be used. Please use me. Please fill me with your power. Please impact people through my body. Here I am. I'm a willing vessel. Amen. Our, we give our bodies to God, right? Because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Man, I really want to worship God. You know what? Praising God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, worshiping God is amazing. But the Bible says when you give your body as a vessel to him to be used by him, that's truly the way to worship God. And it says it's a living sacrifice. How many of you guys know what a sacrifice is? It's something that's brought to an altar to die and to burn and to be a sweet smelling aroma to God. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be living sacrifices, walking around. I'm sacrificed for God, bro. I'm sacrificed for God. The kingdom of heaven's rolling through me, bro. Wherever I'm at, I'm trying to impact people for the kingdom of heaven. That is how we, that's how we're supposed to live. And that is inspiring and that is encouraging. And that will take your Christianity and fill it with so much joy. And it'll take your daily life and fill it with so much purpose. We don't want to add Christianity, Christianity onto your life. We want to have you live it through your life. You know, trying to add something extra onto your life is hard. It's hard to add Christianity. <laughs> Let me take a drink. I don't think I swallowed for about three minutes at least, okay? We don't want to add something to your life. Just let it be a part of your daily life. Just start bearing fruit everywhere you go. Be willing. Be willing to be a living sacrifice for God, right? So uh, when we come to the altar to be a living sacrifice, there are certain things that probably need sacrificed and burnt up in our life. What do you guys think are some of the things that hinder God from being able to move and flow and you be that willing vessel that's like, let's go, Lord. I don't care whatever, what anyone thinks about me. I don't care anything. I'm your vessel. I'm your chosen. I'm your instrument today. What are some of the things that get in the way of that stance and that posture for Christianity? Fear. Fear. Great one. Pride. Pride. Unforgiveness. Ego. Self-consumed identity, right? The embarrassment. Jesus says, if you don't confess me before men, I won't confess you before my Father in heaven. So we got to be willing to confess God before people. We got to be willing to confess God before men. I got a, a lot of stories where I'm out at Hanford where I work and, and we're in a training class and they're asking us, what's the best day of your life? And and I'm sitting there wrestling. Do I get up there and be the Jesus guy in the room? It's the best day of my life. Today I got saved because it's hand down the best day of my life. So as it's getting closer to me, I'm just like, okay, am I going to say it? I'm going to say it. And I'm like, the only way I know how to, how, to, how to stop that is to get up there and be bold. Best day of my life today I gave my life to the Lord. Since then, I haven't regretted a day since. He's brought me a wonderful wife and five kids, an amazing church. I'm so thankful that God got involved in my life. Now my whole friends and family are saved. They're going to heaven now. Praise God. I said that in a training class with 20 people. It, yeah, and praise God for that. But here's the deal. I had to step out in boldness and be willing to be ridiculed, mocked, and looked at different and be labeled out there and as the hand, you know, the religious guy and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I'm dead. I'm dead to that. And I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Amen. We got to be willing to do what it takes and pay the price. But in my secret place, in my mind, I'm wrestling. Okay. Do I get up there and talk about Jesus? I got no problem with it now because I've done it so many times. But that scripture, will you confess me before men? And now that, that, that was there. That was it. Or deny me. And I could have denied Jesus and nobody would have known except me. I could have not said anything about God that day and it would have been between me and the Holy Spirit. 
My daughter has a really good quote. Tell me the quote again. Okay, the quote is, fear hurts more than courageousness. And later on that day, if I wouldn't have said that out of fear or embarrassment, I would have been wrestling with myself and bummed out, feel like I let God down. And, and listen, how many of you guys have done that before? How many of you guys have not stepped up and been bold? And then later on, you're wrestling with that. And hey, that's a growing moment. Don't let the enemy convict you of that. You can learn a lot from that. Learn what you should have did, what you should have said. But we are in the business of trying to figure out how to get Jesus Christ involved in people's lives, and boldness is a crucial step. All right? Point number two, we are at war. Don't forget it. We are at war. This is a war. We are literally warring. I wish we could get one glimpse of the spiritual realm. We'd see the earth. We'd see all the angels and God just watching down, seeing what's going on. It says that they desire earnestly to look into the things that we are doing down here on earth. What's going on? It's kind of like we're in the Super Bowl. The Christians are in the Super Bowl. They're sideline Christians, and there's people that are in the game, and we're trying to be in the game. Amen. I want you guys in the game because that is where Christianity finds fulfillment for you personally. There's nothing better after having a bad day than being able to have a divine appointment with somebody, pray for somebody, see the power of God move and realize your day didn't, wasn't nothing. Amen. God will do that for you. We got to step out in boldness. We're at war. Don't forget it. Boldness never looks to hide behind weaknesses or use an excuse to disqualify yourself from his service. I'm going to read it one more time. I thought it was a good quote. I came up with it myself. I try to have all my stuff original because I don't want, I never want to be a cookie cutter preacher that gets up and regurgitates a book that I just read. I'm telling you, this is how I live and I'm honest about it. I got my family down here. They know this is how I live and I never want to preach something that's, that hasn't first went through me. And I got some stories to tell and I've, I've walked through it with God and I've, I've, I've had the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, last time I preached, I shared about trying to get a guy with no leg healed. Anybody remember that story? Yeah, it's funny now. (laughs) Yeah. 2 Timothy 2.3 says, You must therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are in a war. You got to endure a little hardship. Christianity is made to help get you through that and fight through that, but we also got to deal a little hardship in being bold. It's not easy to be bold all the time. Philippians 1, 28 through 30. Let me read this. It says, don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed, but that you are going to be saved even by God himself. For you have been given, and I love this kicker, you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. It's interesting that Apostle Paul calls living for Christ and trusting in Christ a privilege, but he also likens it with suffering for Christ as the privilege. And that's big boy Christianity. When you move from, when you move from uh, just you know, getting into church, and if you're just getting into church, praise God, we're so glad to have you here. But we want everyone to advance and walk into the power and the dominion and authority that God has for his kingdom. Praise God. Uh, go, moving on for, we are in this struggle together. You have seen my struggle in the past and you know that I am still in the midst of it. Here's the apostle Paul being bold in struggle, in conflict, suffering, being willing, being willing to be labeled as like a Jesus person. How come, how come all of us in this room aren't labeled as a Jesus person at work? I'm going to throw out a few ideas that I thought of. Uh, maybe a fear, you know, maybe it runs across pride. Maybe there's a little sin involved and you feel disqualified. Let me tell you, if you're struggling with sin and you're fighting with sin, do not let that disqualify yourself from serving God and running the race hard. Amen. If you're in the secret place and you're battling and, and, and the enemy gets one on over on you and you get one on him and you're fighting, don't ever think I can't be used by God. God's grace and God's blood is sufficient and his Holy Spirit can flow through anyone. He can throw flow through any vessel and he wants to, a lot of times 
when you're wrestling with the sin and you're praying for somebody, you're really trusting the Holy Spirit because you're not sitting there on your own merits. You're not sitting out there on your own righteousness and everything you've done. You're like, okay, God, I know what I've been, but please help me help this person. And you're more desperate and you're more, you're more just uh, reliant on the Holy Spirit moving in your life. So please, if you're struggling with sin, don't ever let that disqualify you from trying to move forward with God, trying to move forward, going to a life group. Hey, we want it. We want the crazy. Let's have the life groups, bring the crazy. We want it. We want you. We want to know the genuine you. One of the best things I ever heard, God cannot bless your front. Amen. We want genuine, pure, honest people. If you come to home groups, I share my battles and struggles. I share, I'm open with what I'm dealing with, and we're going through life together. Amen. Not alone. You don't need to struggle alone. You don't need to fight alone. Get in a life group and be honest and genuine and sincere with Christianity, with your life group leader, and your life will begin to change. Wasn't even in notes. Go to life group. Where are we at here? This is my favorite point. Boldness looks like Jesus. I Hands down, the rowdiest scripture I've ever seen in the Bible. Well, there's probably more. Hands down, the rowdiest scripture. I like rowdiness. I like toughness. I like just, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for the love and, you know, the the kindness. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for that, but I get inspired to go and live for God by, by being at war, by being a soldier for Christ, by being willing to pay a price, by being challenged by that. That initiates me. That gets me excited. That's what, that's what gets me going. And I want you to go to John chapter 18, verses three through six. John 18, three. Jesus just gets done praying in the garden of Gethsemane. Judas runs off to do his betrayal, and they're all coming back to get Jesus and arrest him. Let's read this. John 18, 3. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now, with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrived at the Olive Grove. How many guys know they came, they came to get Jesus with some smoke? Verse 18, or verse four, hands down, rowdiest verse. I want you guys to read it with me. I'll say it, then you say it. Jesus fully realized. One more time, ready? It always takes, it always takes at least one try. Jesus fully realized. All that was gonna happen to him. So he stepped forward. Hands down, game over. He knew he was about to be mutilated. He knew he was about to be disfigured more than any man, according to Isaiah. Brother Rudy shared a lot about the things that Jesus went through. Mutilated, mutilated. He fully realized all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward. I got time today, cuz. <laughs> Boom. All of them fall down. That's what the word says. Right, Zach? They all fall down. Who's the idiot that got up first and be like, okay, I'm going to go try to get him again? All right? You want to fall down again? Like Jesus pulls up, I am he. He stepped forward, says, I am he. Boom. It wipes out there. Like, that's awesome. You know, that dude that stepped up to go to get him again to try to handcuff him or whatever, he, that guy was pretty bold too, you know. <laughs> Somebody told me, I am he, and it wiped out a whole contingent of Roman soldiers and we're all on the ground. I'm like, you guys go get him first. See what happens to you. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus was amazing, fully realized all that was going to happen to him. Uh, I'm going to let you know right now, you are who you hang out with, right? You are who you hang out with. How do you get boldness in your life? It comes from spending time with Jesus. Where does it say that, Dr. Elder, pastor, disciple, bishop, deacon, evangelist, borderline apostle, Austin? Where does it say that at? Zach, you know where it says that at? It says that in Acts chapter four, verses eight, and then 12 through 13, it says, then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers and elders of our people, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. This is my favorite verse, favorite verse, verse 13, the members of the council. So Peter and John had just gotten arrested. They just got let out. They were worried about a riot. Peter and John 
uh, have a ton of people in the council that threatening them, don't ever say the name of Jesus again, and blah, blah, blah. And they get up and they're like, there's salvation in no one else. How bold is that, right? They, they get up there, they're being persecuted for living for God and saying the name of Jesus. And the guy just got healed. And he's like, there's salvation in no one else. You tell me not to speak in the name of Jesus? Step up. There's salvation in no other name under heaven by which man must be saved than Jesus Christ. That's boldness, right? They were willing to face all of that. But this is my favorite part. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men. How many ordinary men and women do we have here? Ordinary men and women. You can be bold according to scripture. Amen. But I don't know that much scripture. I don't know what to say. Thank God there's another part to this verse with no special training in the scriptures, right? These were ordinary people with no special training in the scriptures. And then it says, however, they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Oh, God, that this church would be recognized as people that have been with Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray that nobody would hide behind excuses and drama in their life or sin, that they would be recognized as people who had been with Jesus. There is no greater claim to your life than being known and being recognized as somebody that has been with Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. How many of you guys like that? That should be the call and the desperation of our heart for everybody in this room. I just want to know, been known to have been with Jesus. How do you know? How, how do you have you been with Jesus? You're reading your Bible. You're praying. God's talking to you through the word. You're talking to him through prayer, throwing some worship, throwing some songs, get plugged into a church. But I want everybody in this room to be, to be known to have been with Jesus. That will make you bold. All right. I want to read Acts chapter 4, 29 through 31 again. My man, we'll get into it in just a sec. I want the Holy Spirit to fall in this place today. The Bible says that what I'm about to read, that the Holy Spirit fell and they were filled and the room shook. They'd already been baptized in the Holy Spirit in chapter 1. Can you be baptized in the Holy Spirit or filled more than once according to Scripture? Yes or no? Absolutely. You can be filled more than once with the Holy Spirit according to Scripture. And I want all of us, you know, boldness comes from spending time with Jesus. Boldness also comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, verse 29 through 31. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness. And preaching your word, stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They preached the word of God with boldness. How many guys down for that? Please stand to your feet.